Hello everyone, my name is Eddie Hong from Midas IT. I'm currently in charge of Technical Manager and Structural Software Department. First of all, thank you for coming to our webinar today. Today, I would like to talk about performance-based design for building structures. From now, I'll abbreviate performance-based design as PBD. This is table of content, which I'll explain in detail. Contents include what PBD is, why we need PBD, and how we design based on PBD. I'll also use various project applications throughout the webinar to explain. The concept of PBD was made after Northridge earthquake in 1994. Since the accident, Structural Engineers Association of California organized a committee named Vision 2000. In this committee, people discussed a new seismic design code based on the structure's behavior affected by earthquake. During the discussion, they mentioned seismic performance with four types of factors on the screen. And that was the starting point of PBD. After that, the idea was developed into ATC, FEMA, and ASCE. The primary purpose of seismic design is safety assurance and minimizing the budget for the repair. To assess the structure in PBD, the engineer first chooses the performance objective. In Vision 2000, they define four types of seismic performance levels depending on damage to the structure. This is the standard procedure of PBD. First of all, we determine the performance objectives, and then we perform dynamic analysis for the assessment of performance capacity. If you get the result NG, you have to revise design or set the objectives again. The PBD of these days can be explained in two ways. Firstly, utilization of existing structures. Typically, Engineers use standard ASCE41 or FEMA440. For details about these two standards, you can see them on the slide. The second one is for the new structure. Engineers usually use TBI or LATBSTC in the practical project. So for the PB, PBD design, the engineer combines ASC41 with TBI or LATB-SDC. Then let's think about why we need to be aware of performance-based seismic design. It could be because countries like America or Japan are all, all aware of PBD, or it could be because it seems more advanced than the current standard. The clear answer to these two questions is that the current standard has some risk regarding its assumptions. From analysis and design perspective, there are, two, there are some differences. The meaning of two-level design here is strength design and serviceability design. Traditional approach, it is expensive to do the design work, and it is about complicating multi-degree of freedom in structure. However, PBD can access damage deformation or strains clearly about the structure system, which has dissipation of energy or ductility capacity. This graph can explain the assumption about the seismic design method. In this graph, VE is actual seismic load, but the engineers consider ductility capacity dividing, dividing it with the R factor. We designed with R factor until now, and then adding the rebar to some members, considering its seismic details additionally. During the design work, the R factor and seismic load are all assumptions. That is ineffective and uneconomical method compared to PBD, which is based on actual load with some case study. The difference between linear and nonlinear is whether E is constant or not. 
And difference between elastic and inelastic is whether the value return is located along the previous line or not. From now, in chapter 3, I'll explain about the nonlinear analysis. As I mentioned before, PBD for high-rise building is used in practice according to Tall Building Initiatives and LATBSDC. You can check on the slide contents about these two guidelines. Then, what is the difference between ASC41 and TBI? As you can see, in ASC41, Linear analysis is done primarily before checking the result depending on the element or the system. If the condition is a failure, the engineer does pushover or nonlinear analysis to check clearly. But in TBI, there's only one way of using dynamic analysis for the design. You may already know about pushover analysis and time history analysis. But for some of you who may have heard of it for the first time, I'll explain about the fundamental conception of pushover and time history analysis. The building is pushed in one horizontal direction. Iterative analysis and design process continues until the design satisfies pre-established performance criteria. The lateral load slowly increases, and the sequence of cracks, elving, plastic hinge formation, and failure of various structural components is recorded. Time history analysis is a step-by-step -step analysis of dynamical response of structure to specified load that may vary with time. The left side of the formula consists of mass, damping, stiffness terms, and right side consists of external force. The objective of Time history analysis is to get the variation of forces at each step and get the maximum response under the detailed time history. First function shows the seismic acceleration depending on time steps. The plot shows maximum, displace, maximum displacement along the period based on the forces. But also, engineers can get various responded results about the hysteretic response, plastic hinge, and energy. Analysis methods are distinguished as static and dynamic depending on the time. And depending on the material property, it can be distinguished as linear and nonlinear. As you see, pushover analysis is nonlinear static analysis, and time history analysis can analyze both types linear and nonlinear. So what about what about it in Midas Gen? As you can see, everything is possible in Midas Gen, starting from linear analysis to nonlinear for practical project. In the case of time history analysis, the program can analyze the primary hinge and the fiber model about the beam column and the wall. Especially, seismic control device analysis is used for PBD in practical project. When engineers analyze nonlinear analysis, they have to model according to properties per element. And in above picture, as you can see, Midas Gen supports a hinge and fiber model. In the hinge model, there are two types which lumped and distributed hinges. For the fiber model, engineers define depending on material properties for RC and steel. But also, engineers use beam column, wall, truss, general link for nonlinear analysis. For the hysteresis model, there are also various types. This is an inelastic material model and hysteresis model in Midas Gen. And the most 
usage models are Mendor model, Park model, Bilinear, and VMA among these options. Of course, users can define manually the model which is considered degrading. As we have briefly learned about the concept of PBD with some analysis, let's move on to Chapter 4. In Chapter 4, I would like to show some application examples in other countries that use PBD. Then compare the result between P program and Midas Gen regarding the results of nonlinear analysis. The first case is seismic assessment about educational buildings in Korea. Currently in Korea, seismic assessment about school buildings is mandatory. Based on ASC 41-13, engineers modify seismic parameter as Korean condition. As same with PBD, we first have to set up the performance objectives. The different point is that engineers replace the masonry wall model to the truss model and they do the preliminary ev evaluation first and do the first detailing evaluation next, then go on to the second detailing evaluation. This is the general outline of the model and along the Y direction, there are shear walls and um, braced frame system. And as I mentioned before, for the masonry wall, we modeled it as a truss element. As this structure was built 40 years ago, seismic design is not considered in this building. So required performance here could be um, LS, life safety. In Korea, we have started to analyze seismic performance assessment because of the disastrous earthquake that happened in 2018. At that time, um, literature scale was only 5.0, but it had a huge effect on the building. Mostly because the school was built with masonry wall at least 40 years ago. Because of this reason, the earthquake had immense effect on these type of buildings. Since this accident, engineers have analyzed seismic performance assessment of all school buildings. If you look at the picture, you can check the most critical crack in the expansion joint, column, and masonry wall, especially diagonal um, crack or shear failure of the column is critical as it can be um, it can affect building to collapse. In Midas Gen, the users can define the material property of the masonry wall for seismic performance assessment. And a masonry wall is divided into two types, a field wall and a waste wall. And users can assign either of these depending on the material properties. The elastic modulus of the masonry wall is assigned using user defined as you can see in the screen. Then, we can put in the size and assign the data as a scale factor, as you can see in the screen. As you can see, the structure consists of waste wall, like shown in the pictures. The waste wall is the main reason that could cause the shear failure of the column. We modeled it as follows in the previous slide. As effective buckling length is shorter than before, the waste wall is weaker than the filled masonry wall. Including the masonry walls, users can efficiently define stiffness whether or not if there are any cracked sections in the beam, column, and wall element at the same time. This value is the data, same as ASC 41. If you look at the following picture, 
we can see the difference between column 1 and 2. Considering the hinge properties of these columns, only one property is shown in column 1, while there are two properties shown in the second column. So, depending on that member assignment, the result of pushover analysis will be able to be different. Engineers must be careful about this issue. The procedure of seismic performance assessment is in three steps. In preliminary evaluation, we assess briefly about ductility using SDS, weight, gamma, and C parameters. In first evaluation, we analyze seismic design putting RS load case or equivalent static load case. However, in this part, there are different things regarding seismic design, which is assigning M vector for each element with keeping R vector on one. In second evaluation, using pushover analysis, users not only assess the performance of element, but also structure whole system. And regarding acceptance criteria, we follow the value in ASC 41. These seismic assessment features are already upgraded in Midas Gen. Especially in second evaluation, program automatically define hinge properties to element and assign according to ASC 41. This data is ASC plastic hinge model, which considered force and deformation. In the past, Users has to, had to define these manually. And uh, the next one is the result of pushover analysis along the X direction. The performance point was found in 61 step. The feature offers the table-based parameter result for each element and calculation. We can easily check the result about the final element for each floor's performance result. In fact, before this feature was developed, engineers had to spend their time around four weeks to assess. However, using Gen right now, they report the result with only within one week using this feature. The second application example would be apartment. Noticing how surface area of Korea itself is not that big, typical residential building in Korea is at least 15 floors. Therefore, residential buildings that exceed 15 floors take up more than 50% of total structure market in Korea. Therefore, PBD is highly demanded in these kind of residential buildings in Korea. In Korea, most of the residential building consists of shear wall. In this case, the height is 61.6 meters and the thickness of the wall is 300 millimeters. In the case of a residential building, Korea also typically follows TBI guide for PBD. In TBI, there are two levels to design performance result. First one is service level evaluation. You can check the enough result about demand capacity ratio of bending and shear. In this structure case, we did time history analysis using seven types of practical earthquake data. Next, maximum earthquake evaluation. About each case of maximum considered earthquake, we have to do PBD. This is the result of story drift along the X and the Y direction. This plot result, result is about each earthquake case for each floor. We can check the different maximum story drift depending on the X and Y direction.
Just like how we anticipated, the displacement increased as it moved to the higher floor. The graph shows the shear force for each floor. We can check the x direction of bottom shear force on the first floor is twice bigger compared to the y direction. This graph is a plot about the compressive strain on the lowest floor blue point for each floor. Limit strain is lower than 0.002, so we can consider it safe. In the slide, the capacity about floor shear force is not satisfied overall. To get reliable capacity, we need to redesign the horizontal rebar and thickness of wall in PPD. We also reviewed deformation rotation of coupling beam as the right graph. We got the result that exceeded collapse prevent level. So we need to review the design. And this residential building is the one of application example using PPD. We saw the assessment and result that the serviceability and performance design assessed in residential building. Third one is Grand Tower in Los Angeles. This building was built for hotel, podium, and office. About this high-rise building, they assigned a fiber model using shear wall and assigned an outligger as a belt truss. The first fundamental period was 11 seconds and checked based on LATBS DC. As same with second application, they did the nonlinear dynamic analysis using 11 types of seismic wave based on serviceability earthquake level and maximum considered earthquake level. The arrangement of outligger was designed as you can see. The result in PBD is different depending on the arrangement of opening. So we can check the difference effect, different effect of drift value depending on the opening area. That means applicability about the opening is really important in time history as well. Following the graph, we can see the two interesting results. Firstly, the tendency is smaller in base shear about LS load case in SLE level than base shear in design code. Secondly, base shear value is smaller in nonlinear time history analysis than RS as same damping in maximum considered earthquake level. But it depends on the structure type. In maximum considered earthquake level, the permission of story drift value is only 3%. And as you can see, they were satisfied at each level. Maybe we can see that this in this model, the effect of outligger belt trust is assigned. Some floors show Libor tensile yield and compressive strain of RC wall, which is satisfied in acceptable level. Regarding rotation caused by a plastic hinge, it was satisfied with collapse prevention, but did not satisfy the life safety. In the last case, I would like to share a comparison between Midas Gen and Perform 3D regarding the residential building. I'll show more details in each slide. This is the conception of the model and the thickness of wall is set to 200 millimeters. First of all, I compare the mass data about the structure to prove that the same condition is set in each software. I also compare the fundamental periods. There is little bit small gap between the two 
but it will not significantly affect the result of the nonlinear analysis. The model about RC and Libertin elastic was defined as uh, trilinear and bilinear. I assigned the fiber model and rebar arrangement as one column array in both software for wall element. The blue box shows the setting about the integral point of freedom. But in the P program, I couldn't set up nonlinear properties out of the plane because they couldn't support it. As you can see, I analyzed the model using two types of analysis. The first one is the pushover analysis. Total load steps consists of 50 steps, and when displacement reaches 0.0, 1616 meters, the program will finish the analysis itself. This graph is the result of base shear and displacement in pushover analysis. We can check both results are almost the same. This is the moment curv curvature graph of W4, as you can see. And you can see here how there is not much gap between the two programs. This is the actual strain value in W4. And you can see here that it is similar as well. The second one is nonlinear time history analysis. And in this case, I used direct integration method. And in the case of damping, I consider 5% as modal method. And as a seismic wave, I set up EL central. Um, as you can see here, um, this compared the result um, is the displacement on the roof. And you can see how the results are also similar. Um, here, I plotted the base shear value depending on the time step. In the P program, the value is a bit higher. Here, this graph was plotted as x-axis based on the roof displacement and the y-axis based on the shear. Here, as the same with pushover analysis, this result is in moment curvature regarding W4 element. And here, this is the moment curvature result regarding W23, as you can see here in the screen. And this is the wall actual strain value depending on time history analysis, as you can see. And lastly, this is the comparison result of um, both programs regarding moment results of W23 element. So now I'd like to share my overall opinion about PBD 
and nonlinear analysis. So in conclusion, linear analysis has to be satisfied first in order for us to trust the analysis result in nonlinear analysis. Always keep in mind that nonlinear analysis results could change depending on the input data. Therefore, engineers have to review all the results and go through peer reviews in various PBD or ASC standards as it is challenging to get accurate results at once. Overall, we need to review the result using various methods and cross-check with other engineers. And of course, PBD guideline is really practical. However, engineers' decision is the most important factor. I personally believe that the design isn't reliable when only using ACI or AISC design standards, especially for the high-rise building. Not only PBD, but also seismic assessment about the existing building is really important. As time goes by, there are many types of new building, but more practical point is the maintaining the existing building. This movement is currently done in US, Korea, Japan, China, UK, and so on. CTBUH, LATBSDC, and TBI are offered as the latest guideline for PBD. In the near future, PBD will likely replace design work for all types of buildings. So, just three years ago, PBD or seismic performance assessment wasn't really that much considered practically in Korea. I guess there wasn't much knowledge about this kind of things. And only when we experienced the disastrous accident due to the medium level earthquake, then that was the time when we had started to have interest on PBD and seismic performance assessment. And now we apply the seismic design method for all types of building, starting from educational building to residential building. So because of this effort, Korean engineers develop their skills to another level. Currently, PBD is always considered um, in Korean structure. So this is the end of my webinar and thank you very much for listening and I hope it was helpful for all of you. Thank you and have a nice day.